here's our idle initial values. Now, because this is manifold air temperature based, this is our manifold air temperature. Now, this is going to change uh, based on whether or not you're reading uh, air from the air filter box. If you're reading it from the air box, uh, likely you're only ever going to read ambient temperatures, so you can actually change these values on the left, because I highly doubt you're going to read an ambient temperature of 212 degrees. However, most Mustangs, which that's what we're setting this up for, have the manifold air temperature sensor in an aluminum manifold. And it does see what people perceive as heat soak. So 212 is not out of the question on, let's say, a, a supercharged V8, where the manifold temperatures can get very high, especially right after a pull. So if you're supercharged or turbocharged, you might see these high 150, 200 degree temperatures in the, in, in the intake manifold, in which case you're going to need more air uh, at those higher temperatures for the car to idle at the same amount. So to set this up initially, what we're going to do, 40% obviously on this particular car is way too high of a target it's going to net us roughly 1400 RPM. When this information was taken, it was from a fully warmed up car. So 30% is going to net us roughly 1050 RPM. So let's start with that 30%. So 30%, 1000 RPM, 35, probably not bad. We're going to make this 30. 1,200 when the engine's cold. We're going to need less per duty percentage when the engine is cold than we will when it's hot. So we're going to target 1,200 cold. Looks like 35% might get us there. Now keep in mind this is from a warm engine. So we're going to set this table up and then we're going to add 5% to the bottom duty cycle percentage. And 800, it shows roughly 16%. So we're going to punch in 16%. So we got 35 and we're going to go with 35 here. 16, 30. And what I'm doing is I'm interpolating between the numbers and I'm not uh, interpolating from 16 to 34 because that's going to skew the numbers. Notice how these are 100 RPM steps. 100 RPM steps and if it would be it's not it's a non-linear curve based on the the idle valve and we're going to add 5% uh, when it's full hot because we need less air when it's cold we need more air when it's hot and the idea is when we lift off the throttle and it goes in the closed loop, it's going to pull the value from this table. So if we're hunting for a thousand RPM idle and the manifold temperature is 100, when we go in the closed loop, instead of going to the last value that it had, it's going to reference this table. It's going to grab 32. The idle valve is going to go to 32%, and that's where the idle is going to start. Now, this is just, we're just using the information to get a baseline set on this table. And then we can come back and we can change this uh, later uh, based on what we see from data logs or actively tuning it so we can get it more correct because the idea is to get the idle valve to 
reach target, but we want to be about 50 RPM above target when we lift the throttle. So if we're shooting for 900 RPM, we want this value to go to uh, a number that's going to net us 950 and then let the, let the idle settle into 900. You don't want this to be right at 900 because then it may drop below target and then the engine may stumble. We definitely don't want the car stalling out. Uh, this is compensation curve for uh, duty cycle versus battery voltage. I'm going to leave this alone for now. Typically, we'll mess with that later. Air conditioning idle up. We're going to leave this off for now. And then we can come back and figure out when the AC comes on, how much uh, duty adder percentage um, and how much RPM we want to shoot for. Because when the AC is on, we'd like the, R the engine to idle maybe a little higher. This way it idles stronger um, so that we don't stall out coming to a stop sign or whatnot. Idle advanced settings. Um, idle advance is going to help control the idle with timing. Timing is going to con control the idle speed much faster than actually letting air into the engine. Uh, if you've ever looked at a data log from an OEM engine uh, and done uh, looked at the timing, at idle the timing is jumping around three to four degrees. And that's doing the same thing we're going to set up here. Uh, as the uh, idle starts to fall, you want to increase timing to make more power to, to bring the RPM back up. As the timing starts to go above, tar or the idle starts to go above target, we want to decrease timing to bring the, the target back down. We're gonna do that by setting it to adaptive. Adaptive, is going to follow this curve. So whatever number we're targeting, adaptive is going to target that number as well. We want to set it to adder. Adder is going to take the number we set up in the curve and it's going to add it or subtract it if it's a negative number from our base ignition table. If we put this at set value, when we build this curve, it's going to simply throw this number in this curve directly into the timing table. It's going to say, if we have this set at 15, we're going to idle at 15 degrees of timing. So we're going to put it at set value, or I'm sorry, we're going to put it at adder. Condition is closed loop PID. So when the this is going to initiate when closed loop comes in. This doesn't always work with closed loop. Sometimes you have to set it to manual and input the values necessary here in this field. Um, you can use uh, idle advance without having closed loop idle set up. You can set it to um, load or RPM and then build your curve as a set value if you'd like and set it up to manually come in. It's all however you want to set yours up, but for today, we're going to set it to closed loop idle. So here's the curve we're working with. When we are targeting 900 RPM per se, we're going to add zero degrees to the initial timing table. As we climb 50 degrees above target, this table as it's set now says we're going to decrease timing by one. See, that's a negative one value. When the idle starts to fall below target by 50, uh, it's going to add two degrees. So it's going to add two degrees to bring the, the, the RPM target back up. <clears throat> you can become too aggressive with these values. For instance, if we set these negative values here too high, 
it goes in the closed loop idle, we might actually create an RPM dip where closed loop idle initiates, it's trying to get to target, the timing is subtracted, when it reaches target, timing is still low, and it causes the idle to go below target and then come back up. So you have to find numbers that work well. I suggest starting with small numbers here and then working your way up. On this side, where we have a negative RPM delta, uh, when we get 50 RPM below, we're adding two degrees of timing. And what this is doing is, as long as the numbers aren't too aggressive here, as we start to dip below target, we're going to add timing to increase the, the engine speed back to target. So it creates, essentially we're building a timing loop to hold at target rather than building a timing loop here. This works much better. Now if we look at the values from this table that we built, we're targeting around 20 uh, degrees of timing at idle. And we can see at 25 degrees, we're still pulling good vacuum. So I know that if we can add up to five degrees of timing to help stabilize the idle. The other direction, simply by removing three degrees of timing, we can see that the by going to 17 degrees, the KPA, we're, we're not pulling very good vacuum on this engine anymore. So negative three degrees is going to pull a lot of power out of the engine. So our negative numbers above the zero, we definitely don't want to get too aggressive. So let's adjust the table here. Negative three is about as high as we want to go. We're going to set this to 300 at negative three. So every 100 RPM above target we have, we're going to subtract one degree of timing. We're going to set this to 100. And here we can add up to five degrees of timing without the engine getting too upset. And, but we want this kind of to be immediate. So we're going to leave this at negative 50 because we don't want to drop below target and stall the engine. Now if we find that looking at a data log, we're at target and we keep adding too much timing and shooting above our target, we may want to decrease this number to one and see how the engine acts. And you can do that sitting right in the driveway, letting the engine idle and adjust these numbers. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and don't want to miss future videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button at the bottom. If you need help with your next MegaSquirt project and you'd like tuning services or tuning classes, you can reach me at a91what at gmail.com.